Good afternoon, friends and fans. Another day, another, well, it's been more than one day. It's been several days. We're living in it through a pandemic and just too many days of unpleasant weather and darkness. So I'm back and I'm just trying to keep it real. So let's talk about this haphazard outfit. I would have preferred to put the brooch up here but I was worried that this is a very thin cotton and it could tear the material, so I put it down here. This is just Vera Wang from Kohl's, vintage. This is the largest brooch that I own. And I, I don't know who this is, but they, they made the collar a little bit tight. So today we're gonna do the long-awaited unboxing. And doing an unboxing is as much about talking about feelings and life and what's going on in the world as it is looking at objects and talking about them. And so I pared down the number of things in the box this time because I think the last video was just a little too long and I tried to be selective. But looking at the things that were rejected, I can only say you're going to be glued to YouTube, at least for the rest of the pandemic. And so, let's begin by getting the box. The box itself has a story. This was a random box that I kind of, you know, went into my room <laughs> into that mess. I identified a box that could be quickly emptied and quickly took said box. Well, anybody who knows, knows that these are kick-ass shoes and I'll show you this and so these are the most beautiful made in Italy multiple materials shoes but I'm going to talk about those shoes another time I bought those shoes for dancing they're going to be dance shoes and they are perfect because the soles are worn out just right but let's not talk about the shoes Let's go right to the box. How easy is it to open this box? You just pick up the lid. Oh, you know, and as I'm looking at this very substantial box lid, I am thinking this is something I've wanted to speak about for a long time. In a pandemic, but really all the time, you really need to re-examine everything. This is an amazing potential craft material. You could make a shadow box with this. You could make a diorama. You can cut an opening in it and make it a stage. You could use it in conjunction with this box and do the same. So that's just a little mini lesson, which brings me to the next thing. You know, you try and downsize and then you go on the internet to look things up and you find videos about repairing all of those things that you're thinking of getting rid of. So you retrieve them, bring them back in the house, and then you have additional projects. So really, you put forth all of that effort, sorting through it, deciding which one, and we all know that expends so much emotional energy finally making the decision, although we all know what those decisions are like. <laughs> you either get it out of the house quickly or you let it sit in the car so you can mull over what's sitting in the car. So yeah, you just revisit everything now. There, one of the best comments on this video where the guy, um, you know, fixed a, a vintage expensive designer bag. You know, somebody's like, are you just watching this because it's a pandemic and you don't know what else to do? Which was followed by, which I thought was just, just emblematic of these times and hysterically funny and short and sweet and right to the point. How do, I don't even know how I got here. And so I think that's a good thing to think about when we get lost on the interwebs. Okay. Let's open some things. I want to say that we are still being very ecological 
not wasting any paper. I spent way too much time looking for the tape this morning. I meant to mention that this program was sponsored by. I spent way too much time looking for tape this morning. So in the interest of making the unboxing that much more entertaining, I upgraded the paper from regional flyer on sort of matte paper that feels like a trashy sales flyer. I upgraded it to tear sheets from fashion magazines that I was going to donate or put in the recycling bin anyway. And so not only do we get to unbox the thing, we can also examine the paper that it's wrapped in and discuss fashion. So yeah, I might, I might lose some people here and that's fine. You know, you just kind of feel it out and try and figure out what direction to move in. And, you know, I, I have wonderful things in my house and I've wanted to share them for the longest time. And this provides me with this amazing opportunity to indulge all of my nonsense, you know, my fashion and my jewelry. And I even have colored lights and stuff. And so the odyssey begins. Okay, which one are we gonna open first? I say, let's go for this one. It's beautifully wrapped. I will say that after spending way too much time looking for tape, I had to kind of use washi tape, and which seems wasteful and kind of is, but I wanted to tape it because I wanted to make it into a nice package. I remember when I was a tween, I guess, um, going to Bloomingdale's and they had, they gift wrapped anything that you bought and they put it in these magnificent boxes. The boxes were all different colors. Every color was a different size and they had them stacked in like just order and, and they were legit boxes that you didn't put together. They were made with heavy cardstock, covered with beautiful lacquered paper. And so there was a box and a lid and then they would wrap it and they got the sharpest corners. They did it one, two, three. It was amazing. I would buy things there just so that I could get them gift wrapped. Yeah, you know, like a, a $2 widget. Can you please wrap that for me? Of course they're gonna wrap it. It's what they love doing. All right, so let's look at this. And this paper is very interesting, as is the washi tape. And I'm, I'm holding on to it. I stuck it on the dresser here, and so I can, I can reuse it. Okay, so we have this box, which provides limitless craft opportunities. But before we go to the box, and I wasn't even selective here because probably, well, Probably if it was a nice picture that I truly loved, I wouldn't have wanted to crinkle it. But here we go. We have Gucci. That's right. Don't you love this? Look at that bag. It is tiny. It weighs a lot. It's essentially useless. It's a complete and total fashion accessory. And it's okay to love those things and realize at the same time that they're totally stupid and not very useful. Now I know diehards will say, well, blah, blah, blah. You just don't live that kind of a life. And that could actually be true. I guess if I got out more, I would find a use for a bag like this. Anyway, I love her little sequined capelet jacket. I love the way they use the coral colored type. This is just a lovely spread. It is not their best though. I have seen wilder and crazier and more wonderful and I'll bring some of that out sometime. And this is just Prada, you know, grays and minimalist and leave me alone. That is not the team that I play for. Okay, let's open this box. I don't know if we're going to get to 
all the things at the rate I'm going. Okay, so this is a box from Disney Parks, Starbucks, and it rattles. So, my first assumption is always, it could be jewelry, because I do have a soft spot for sparkly things. That doesn't mean that I love everything sparkly. There's a difference in kinds of sparkle. And we all have our own personal preferences, which is what makes the world go round. Okay, let's open this. Oh, I love this box, seriously. Excellent craft material. Look at that. How beautifully is that packaged? Note, if you go and you look at the previous unboxing video, we've seen this tissue paper before. Okay, oh, and it rattles. It sounds a bit plasticky. You could get some good beats going with this. <laughs> All right, let's open it up, right? But it's not about opening it, it's about the build-up. That's why I'm just talking. And now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at it and talk about it. But you can't see it yet. Yep, that's how it works. Oh, this is lovely vintage 60s plastic. I bought this about two years ago in at Yellow Springs, Ohio. We were in this lovely little shop. I was there with friends. They gave you something free if you bought something. And this is just right up my alley. You know, 50s, 60s plastic, made in Hong Kong, you know. Don't give me made in China. Now look at that. It's not a puzzle. You know, it looks like it should be a puzzle because it has that little ball that, you know, we used to have in toys. Well, some of us, some of us. I'm supposed to do that with my hand. It's not working. Whatever. There's a little silver ball in there. No, it's actually, it's clear plastic. These are often made of silver metal and toxic things. Yeah. And this is just a sweet little terrier dog. And he's just standing there in this sort of periwinkle blue plastic platform surrounded by pink. And I just think this is a delightful thing, and this lives on my dresser all the time. But it isn't lonely, it has lots of company. And we've got a pandemic and time to fill, and it's easy. So let's move right along and get something else out of this fun box. Which one? Oh dear, there's another one. It's in magazine paper. I love the possibilities that something like this presents. Okay, so more washi tape. I don't think it's real washi tape because I think it's sort of plastic and I think washi tape is, oh, I know what this is, yeah. Okay, so I'm a big fan of Mindy Kaling. I think she's really cool. I think she's awesome. But you know, I'm not gonna hang a big poster in my room, no offense. That's just not what I do. And so, in this magazine, there was an article, and look at this beautiful picture. That is right, is she gorgeous? And all those colors and flowers, that's right. So I don't think I did a bad thing by wrapping something in this because I got to enjoy it the first time when I read the interview with Mindy Kaling. And now I'm sharing that enjoyment with all of my fans. And so if you don't know who Mindy Kaling is, you should Google her and watch some of her stuff. She is one funny woman. Okay, another sweet box that would make a delightful craft project. Look at this, it slides open. Oh, you didn't see that. Oh, I forgot this part. This doesn't rattle so much, but jewelry doesn't always rattle. If it's well packed, it really shouldn't rattle. 
Oh, this is sweet. So this is vintage Lego, and it's something that they never reissued, and I never understood that. I think, to me, Fabuland was the most fun theme ever. It outpinks all the girly stuff and all those cute things and the licensed characters and it works with regular Lego and you could buy sets and they came with little accessories. I will talk about that on another show and Fabuland will need its an entire show. So this is a bunny. I am certain that the bunny probably has a name, but I don't remember what it is. The little, okay, so that's the bunny. And they have, they have really sweet faces and they have mini fig size bodies, only their, their legs are attached. They don't come off. They're permanently hinged. Although you could prop, well, no, I wouldn't, but they move separately. Although regular mini fig legs move separately too. That is true. Yeah. And they have these big heads, which is very in now. That's another topic for discussion. How the size on little toy animals, the size of their heads just keeps growing and growing and growing like littlest pet shop. It's like a physics experiment. I don't understand it, but I understand the appeal. The big head and the small body always looks cute. And if you make the eyes gigantic, well, put in some white dots for the win. The question there is how many white dots? Another discussion. Anyway, so this is the bunny and she has a little basket on her back and there are, they use the same bread loaves that Lego still uses, that baguette piece. And I probably have them someplace, but in my rush to fill the box and wrap everything, I'm like, who's gonna notice? So she's got a lovely little basket that looks like it's woven and the sweetest face. And her paint is still in excellent condition because I love my Fabuland. Although I did let my children play with it. They played with Fabuland because I wanted to. I miss those times. <laughs> hey kids, I want to play with Fabuland. No, mommy. Nope, you're playing with Fabuland. It's great. Let's go back to the box. All right, let's see. Let's go for the pink, right? Let's go for the pink. Pink is usually, it's, a, oh, it's another rattle thing. It's another rattle thing. Could be jewelry, might not be. Let's open up this tissue paper that we've seen before and we'll probably see again, although I'm really enjoying the magazine pages. Oh. Okay, well this, I have some things that are so ugly, they're cool, and I love them. And they're so like stupid and non-functional. And sometimes the more useless, the better. And that applies to humans too. Just, just say, just say. So this is one of those items. It's the sweetest vintage Christmas decoration of the most horrible looking reindeer that was probably Rudolph before the paint got scratched off of his nose. Whoops. All right, I will master this camera thing. I will do that. Yep, you see that? And so to make it even worse, it's a bell. So it's an ornament and it just, how, that is a real lame-ass sound. Like, if you really wanted a bell, you should buy a bell. And if you really want an ugly reindeer figurine, that's what you should get. But the beauty of this is in the horror of it. It was like I watched some guy last night. He made a pair of Croc Martins. Yeah, a pair of Crocs. Doc Martin's on the top. You should watch that video. I'm too lazy to look it up. Just go to YouTube and search for Croc Martin's. Let's go back to the box. Two more things. Okay. I might only open one of them 
because I know that this tries people's patience. One can only watch me rant for only so long. And, you know, the beauty of YouTube is you can always mute it. You can always shut it off. Nobody knows. I just see numbers. They send me amazing metrics. They send me wonderful information that allows me to understand a little bit about what my thousands of fans, oh, tens of thousands of fans are experiencing. Okay, this last thing is amazing. It's, um, it's a vintage toy, although I'm not even sure how vintage it is. It's made in Germany. It's made to look like a book of matches. Okay. You would not use this box for a craft project because the beauty of this is in the way it fits in the box. And so I might take out one or two pieces, but I've been talking a lot and I've been, it's a lot of time. This is already kind of long. So, yeah. Oh, this is one of my major pet peeves. So, this is a toy that has survived at least 20 years intact, in beautiful condition. And then somebody slaps on a sticker right on the paper. Sometimes you have no choice, but... Yeah, if there's anybody out there that prices things and don't put safety pins in silk scarves. Yeah. And those things that snag easily, separate them out because they're going to be destroyed. Okay, so this is what's in the box. And so all of the pieces are made from wood. So you have like... Oh, they're beautiful. This is a work of art, also a potential craft project. I'm lucky enough to have two of these. So that's a little tree. And we have, oh my goodness. I think this is, this is a camel. So these are very similar to a lot of vintage game pieces in their design and the wood that they're made out of. They're made out of really nice wood. It's not cheap or soft. This is, this is nice. You know, those Germans, they know how to create all kinds of things. They're doing way better now. Okay, this is a llama. This is a llama. So it's, you know, in more of those. And then one of the cutest pieces ever made by man is this grass. I would love to see this in blue. So I could have an ocean too. I suppose if I, no, I only have one piece of grass. Not a lot of grass for all those animals. Oh my goodness, what's gonna happen to their supply chain? Oh my, oh my, oh my. You know what, this is easier to put back than I thought. I'm gonna slide it right back in its box. Yeah, like that. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that beautiful? I have many more lovely things. I hope you will continue to watch my videos, subscribe. If you hit the bell, you get a notification every time I put out another video. And then you make the choice. Oh my God, shut up already. I'm not watching that garbage. Or, hallelujah, I'm having a horrible day. I'll watch anything to make that cloud go away. So yeah, and anything that's in the middle, it's totally a spectrum. Anyway, I love you all. Hang in there, be safe, be healthy, and always be good to each other, pandemic or not. I mean, like really, this all of a sudden, being yeah, whatever. That's another show. Thank you for your time.